Hi, I'm Dan Herbert, course developer and tutor at Point Blank Music School. This is the first video in the series in which we're going to explore a cool new synth called Rounds, which is included within Complete 10. We'll start by taking a tour of the interface and then focus in the other tutorials on creating sounds using the analog and FM synth engines, demystifying the voice programmer and checking out additional features such as the remote octave. We cover the different elements of Complete in our sound design course and diplomas here at Point Blank. To find out more information on our courses in London, LA and online, head over to pointblanklondon.com. Rounds opens up a whole range of creative possibilities when it comes to creating evolving and sequenced synth sounds. If you like, you can just use Rounds as a conventional synth, as it comes with high quality analog and digital synth engines. But the most innovative feature of this synth is the voice programmer section, which allows you to program constantly evolving and complex textures, or create interesting and varied sequence patterns. It's essentially a four voice synthesizer with two synth engines. And what's cool is you can create up to eight different sounds for each engine. So potentially one snapshot or preset can contain 16 different sounds, which can be sequenced, morphed, or layered up to four at a time. So Rounds is a Reactor Ensemble, and you can either load it via the latest version of Reactor or the freely available Reactor player as a standalone or a plugin within your host DAW. Here I've loaded up an instance of Reactor as a software instrument within Logic 10. When you first open up Rounds, it can be slightly daunting as the main panel doesn't look like any synth you've come across before, but it's actually simpler than it first seems and has some great features. So this section across the middle with these eight donuts is known as the voice programmer and contains eight sound blocks from A through to H, so not actually donuts. Each of these blocks is made up of four individual cells. We explain this in more detail in another video in this series, but essentially the voice programmer dynamically assigns incoming MIDI notes to different synth sounds, and depending on the selected mode is how these affect the sound. You'll notice there's these little numbers here, and these represent a specific sound from the analog or digital synth engine. If we look at this diagram, you can see we can create up to 16 different sounds and assign four of these to each sound block. The magenta numbers represent the analog synth and the cyan blue represents the digital synth engine. So we basically can have eight different sounds from the analog synth and eight different sounds from the digital synth, which we can select by clicking here. And then we can assign them to a cell in any configuration we like simply by clicking on the number here and you can see it's now updated. When you choose a sound from the soundbar, you'll notice the parameters below change to reflect the sound selected or the synth engine. So if I play a note, you can see how it's rotating around each sound block, hence the name rounds. And if you look down here in the soundbar, you can see how it flashes when triggering the different sounds as well. If I play a chord, then you can also see how it's allocating the notes to different cells indicated by these outer rings. And this is determined by poly mode up here, which is currently set to multi-chord. So multi-chord assigns the notes from my chord across multiple cells. If I switch this to monochord and play a chord, you can see the chord is now played on the same cell or sound. And as I repeat, it moves on to the next cell and continues around the sound block. We can also switch to unison mode, and this creates a thicker sound with the four voices detuned and panned outwards to create a wider stereo sound. But bear in mind that this mode is only monophonic. So let's switch it back to multi-chord for now. Along the top, there are five different voice modes, and these determine how the synth responds to incoming MIDI, and ultimately the type of sound which is created. So the first one is rotate, which is currently enabled. We've got reset rotate, random, layer, and zones. So let's switch to random mode, and I'm just going to solo sound block A by right-clicking on it. And now when I play, you can see how it randomly allocates the notes by jumping around to different cells. Or I could select layer mode, and just by pressing one note, we'll now play up to four cells simultaneously. And this is great for creating sounds with more movement or when stacking up sounds, say, to create a stab sound. Now we look at more detail on the features of the analog synth engine in the following video, but editing sounds is really easy. All we do is just select a sound, then I'm gonna press solo, so we just hear that one sound. Let's just modulate the cutoff with a, a slow LFO. Takes 
pixel off. And we could give it a little bit more movement. Let's go to sound three. Push this up. That's so we could go around and vary all our sounds to create more movement. Or we could create a stab sound. Let's just reset this and reset this controller here and then push up the pitch setting here to something like three. This one here to say plus seven. So lots of creative possibilities here for layering up sounds in different ways. Understanding the voice programmer section and how the different voice modes and progress modes interact is essential if you want to create your own sounds. And if I switch the progress mode to sequence for example and just hold a note, then rounds will play back the cells sequentially. Another great feature of rounds is the morphing capability and you can simply enable it just by clicking in the middle of a sound block. So if I call up this snapshot dawn of rounds and play a note, you can hear and see how it's morphing round. And the different parameters are basically sliding between the sounds. It's ideal for creating constantly evolving sounds with interesting movement. It's also possible to split the keyboard into zones and trigger different cells individually. And this is probably best demonstrated using the complete control keyboard and plugin. So I've loaded up a snapshot called Boxbeat and I'm gonna switch it into zones mode. And now across the keyboard, you can see the light guide reflecting where the different sounds are. So this is cell number one, cell number two, cell number three, and then cell four. So you can actually trigger these sounds independently. The analog and digital synth engines are deceptively powerful and are capable of creating a whole range of different sounds. And you'll find in the output section of all synths a reverb and delay send. These high quality global effects are really usable and I think the reverb is particularly exceptional, capable of creating smooth and expansive reverbs to really help bring your synth sounds to life. So I've called up a snapshot called Asian and then let's open the effects section and play a note. And let's mute the effects. So this is the dry sound. And then with the reverb. Or let's just check out the delay. So really great sounding effects. So up here we can get access to the control page and that allows us to assign parameters to any of the eight macros as well as set MIDI options and also link parameters together within multi-edit. So to assign a parameter, we just click on this button here, go and find a parameter. Let's choose cut off and then move the controller and you can see it's now assigned. We can also link the same parameter from other sounds just by clicking up here. Now when I move the macro, you can see it updates all the cutoffs for sound two or sound three or any of the other sounds I have linked. To use these macros, you can choose view B and let's switch back to the voice programmer so you can see the voice programmer as well as the macros. And these can be assigned within your host DAW or if you have the complete control keyboard, then they're automatically assigned to the performance section.